particular task is administering supplemental oxygen. And uh, this can be used in a variety of different settings depending on uh, the issue that might arise. Uh, you could use this for an individual that might be in respiratory distress. So they're having difficulty breathing, but they are still breathing. Or you could use this in a situation where they are in respiratory arrest, meaning they're not breathing at all. And so you're increasing the percentage of oxygen that you're delivering via your bag valve mask. Um, because of the severity of the situation, all these tasks need to be done fairly quickly and there's quite a few of them. So you just always need to keep that in mind and you always wanna make sure that you're practicing and are fully aware how to do this uh, very quickly because there's a number of different parts and pieces uh, to the particular equipment. So the first thing is that we need an oxygen tank. Uh, one thing that's helpful is to make sure that the oxygen tank has oxygen in it. Uh, and so you wanna check and test that uh, on a regular basis, uh, minimally annually. Uh, to make sure that you have enough oxygen uh, to be delivered when you need it. Uh, this is a type D tank, which means that uh, you have approximately enough oxygen to be delivered uh, for about 40 minutes uh, with the use of the, re of the regulator. If not, it will all blow out in a couple of, a se a couple of seconds. Uh, a couple of safety procedures when you're utilizing the oxygen tank. One is that you don't want to use the oxygen tank around um, uh, a fire because the high percentage of oxygen will increase that and uh, create uh, problems with the fire. You always wanna make sure that it's nice and secure because if for some reason, if this falls or if this breaks off the nozzle, the, because it's compressed air, this can go shooting off and um, hit somebody and cause substantial damage. So you always wanna make sure that you don't just have this standing somewhere so that way it could fall. You always wanna make sure that it's uh, nice and secure. Uh, First thing though, I am going to stand it up just to kind of demonstrate uh, a couple things uh, regarding the tank. Uh, one of the things is, is that first thing that you want to always do is just turn the uh, uh, tank on just a little bit to blow out any dirt or any uh, particles that might have kind of got onto the entrance. So just blow it out just a little bit to flush any um, air out of that particular area. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, what's called my regulator. And what this does is that this limits the amount of air that's actually coming out of the tank and going into the tube and into uh, that person, uh, whoever uh, that might be. So it really limits it to a very slow rate. So you always want to use a regulator, otherwise you'll uh, go through your tank uh, uh, quickly. You want to make sure that you fit uh, the regulator onto the appropriate O-ring, which is always going to be kind of right um, on one of these sides here. So you want to check that to make sure that you're dealing with it in the right particular spot. Our regulator is going to place and go securely onto the oxygen tank. And then we're going to tighten this onto the oxygen tank. This doesn't have to be super, super tight because the compressed air will help pull and secure that into place. So you'll notice here we've got our um, uh, tank uh, measurement. So when we open it up, it will show us if the actual tank is full um, or not full. So as we open that up, you'll start to see that we're not fully full, so we wouldn't have a full 40 minutes, uh, but we definitely have enough to be able to uh, kind of uh, at least uh, use oxygen until um, the um, EMS comes. So for demonstration purposes, I'm not gonna have the oxygen run the entire time that we're talking, but we're gonna assume that it is kind of functioning normally. Once the oxygen tank or the regulator is on and oxygen is flowing through, then we determine what type of breathing device we're actually going to use. If I had an unconscious individual where I was gonna use my bag valve mask, one of the things that you can see here is that I can easily just attach the oxygen hose um, directly to the bag valve mask. It's actually gonna fill up this bag below with 100% oxygen. As I kind of breathe in, it's gonna draw that oxygen into the bag and then directly into the victim. That way we're getting a high percent of, of oxygen into the particular victim. So here we would just use our standard technique of our 
using our bag valve mask either with or without a um, inserted airway and we're able to kind of breathe a high percentage of oxygen directly into that particular individual. If they were only just dealing with respiratory distress and not respiratory arrest, we might use a variety of different um, breathing devices. This particular one is what's called a non-rebreather. The hose is going to insert directly into the mask just like this. This goes directly over the, the face of the individual. We can kind of pinch the nose down to make sure that this is nice and secure. Okay, And then as they slowly breathe, they're actually going to breathe in a much higher level or percentage of oxygen. In addition to this, we could hook this onto a nasal cannula, which is just going to wrap around the ears and just go right underneath the nostrils and plug in, and then they can actually breathe that particular way. So we'd use this to make sure that um, they're getting a high enough level of oxygen in. Uh, we might monitor them with a pulse oximeter because uh, we want to make sure that we're not getting them too much oxygen or too little oxygen. And um, as we continue to just monitor them, they would continue to breathe. If we ran out of oxygen, then we would need to either grab, get another tank, or hopefully by then EMS would come which a much, which, with a much larger tank that would be able to transport them to the emergency room.